These eight digital items were sold altogether for a total of $210,000. The transaction took place on December 13th, 2020, between Pada, a now-retired Brazilian Dota 2 player, as well as CEO and founder of Pan Gaming, selling the Courier collection to a Russian buyer only known as The Emperor for 11 bitcoins, which, at the moment, has a conversion rate of roughly $19,117 per bitcoin, equating to a sum of $210,000. $10,293.72 USD for the transaction. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, what the f And more rhetorically, you're asking yourself, why would anyone pay this much for digital items? Allow me to enlighten you. The cosmetic items in Dota 2 are used to decorate and customize your heroes. Unlike other games, where you can only select one entire set at a time, Dota 2 is unique in the fact that each hero has multiple item slots, and you can mix and match armor, weapons, and hairstyles between the sets, for better, or more oftentimes, for worse. You can get items through a few different ways. Sometimes a common item will drop after a game, you can purchase them directly from the game store, you can have a chance at free items during events, redeem them through promotional merchandise, or exchange in-game currency through the Dota Plus system. The most desirable items, though, exist in the game's loot box system, known as treasures. For the most part, whenever you open a treasure, you have a chance of getting any one of the sets included, and luckily, you won't get any duplicates until you've gotten all of them at least once. The tantalizing factor in this comes in the rare sets, which have a terribly low chance of getting pulled. The odds do get better as you open more but it's anywhere between 2 and 10% around the 10th treasure you open, which varies depending on the rarity, so it's gonna cost you around $20 in order to even have a glimmer of hope. You can also purchase and sell items on the Dota 2 marketplace to other players, and because of the aforementioned scarcity of some items, you'll see a huge discrepancy between the prices of certain items and sets. Take for instance the Adoring Wingfall, a giant mallet that can embolden allies and rebuff all who oppose the will of the Omniscience, which sells for 40 cents, while this funny little hat on a bear can sell for $300! So going back to the transaction in question, what factors led to the huge receipt? Well, the items that were sold were all couriers, little animal friends who deliver items to you during a game of Dota 2. Unlike specific heroes, which realistically may be banned or simply not the best choice in certain situations, couriers show up in all games by default, and every player has a chance to show off their pet pals. So right away, it's an adorable mascot character that everyone will get a chance to see, and it's much more visible than, say, a sword for your hero. What made these couriers so sought after is a little more complex. On May 31st, 2012, Dota 2 released its in-game store for the first time, and along with it were a batch of fairly primitive treasures. They were very much modeled after the Team Fortress 2 crates, in the sense that every game offered you a chance of getting a loot box, but to open it, you need to spend $2.50 for a treasure key. These treasures didn't offer a whole lot at first, just around 7 pieces of cosmetics for a singular character, which you could have just bought from the store for cheaper. What made these things worth the trouble was that every treasure had a 1-2% chance of dropping an unusual courier. These couriers would come with ambient particle effects that made them stand out that much more. With effects such as glowing eyes, a trail of bugs following them, and for the sake of our conversation, an effect known as ethereal flames. This effect allows your courier to be engulfed in a radiant blaze that sticks out like a sore thumb. A thumb that's sore because it's been set on fire. If we're following the TF2 analogy, this effect is similar to the Burning Flames or Scorching Flames effects, which were highly desired due to their visibility, as opposed to something like the Masked Flies, which makes it look like you play Magic the Gathering. What made the Dota Unusuals differ from their TF2 counterparts were the colors. In TF2, the Unusual effects all had set color schemes, whereas Dota 2s could be any color on the RGB spectrum. That means that every unboxed unusual courier had the chance to be totally unique from one another, but this also came with its own set of problems. Turns out, if an unusual spawned with colors that looked black, white, or gray, the effect wouldn't show up at all. As you can imagine, that sucks. On the Dota 2 dev forum, this problem was addressed and fixed in June of 2012, with Valve developer Brandon Reinhardt stating that he purged the old dataset and replaced it with a new one. This fixes a large number of couriers with colors that were totally invalid, black, gray, etc., and colors that we do not want in the potential color pool, pink, etc. 
All couriers generated from now on will draw from the valid list of colors. There are currently 10 valid colors. Surely enough, this was solidified on the November 14th, 2013 patch, which standardized the unique effect colors. And in the Ethereal Flames case, this would be indigo, violet, teal, light green, orange, purple, green, blue, gold, and red. And any of the old colors would be known as legacy colors. Because of this, anything visible outside of the now standard colors would be considered incredibly rare, because they simply can't exist anymore. Well, about that. The collection in question had 8 couriers, all of which had the ethereal flames effect, and all of them were some shade of pink, especially notable as the color that Brandon Reinhardt mentioned that Valve didn't want in the potential color pool. Now, Pada is no stranger to collecting and selling rare items in Dota 2. Matter of fact, on November 6, 2013, he sold a hot pink Ethereal Flames Enduring War Dog Courier for $38,000 to a collector known as July. On top of having the best effect with the defunct Legacy color, the Enduring War Dog was generally considered as the most visually appealing courier at the time, and even nowadays, it's definitely a contender. So when you take into account that this transaction included two pink war dogs, and even the budget version in the trusty mountain yak, on average, each courier only cost $26,250, which is quite the deal when you think about it. All that said, I'm sure we'll hear more from Pada in the future, as his inventory has even more rare goodies in it, including a platinum baby Roshan courier with three empty sockets, just waiting for the right buyer. While we're on the subject, there's actually a courier out there that's even more valuable than that. But what can be more valuable than a Platinum Baby Roshan with 3 empty sockets? A Platinum Baby Roshan with 4 empty sockets. This currently belongs to a Chinese collector, and they've appropriately renamed it the number one courier in the world. Now, this part is hearsay, but according to a Reddit comment, this was sold a while back for 1.8 million Chinese yuan, which is roughly $270,000 US. So yeah man. Name it whatever the hell you want. You've earned it. Now, these couriers aren't necessarily Black Lotus levels of notoriety, but it's interesting and even hopeful to know that Dota 2 can continue to surprise us after all these years. Now, if only these dumbass Pokemon cards can be worth enough to buy me a house. When's it gonna be my turn? While you're here, please subscribe to my channel. Extra thanks goes to my Patreon supporters such as ePointMan, Simon Yakushev, and everyone else you see here. Please follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch, and I've got to rethink my investment portfolios. See you soon!